Intel has possibly figured out the issues to the 14th gen and 13th gen crashing. Let's see how to fix it and also really some other advice that I have. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here and Intel has kind of had a leaked document saying that we found the real issues with 13th gen and 14th gen i9s crashing. A lot of people know this was a big deal a couple months ago. I did make a previous video on this, but since something has come out and something is new, I'm like, you know what? Might as well just check it out and we'll see. And it kind of gives me some more insight into what I recommend for stability. I've never had any stability issues on my 13th gen or 14th gen i9 CPUs. So this is really, really odd for me. And honestly, when you see the fix, it explains why I've never had any issues. It's weird to say, but finally overclocking a CPU made it more stable because you were disabling some of the auto features that Intel kind of throws in and you were just using your own stuff. Really wasn't what I expected out of an Intel CPU, especially with how much power they pull. This is more of like an AMD thing you realize. So let's just get into it. We are going to check out the leaked news articles talk about it then we're gonna go into the bios and see really what i recommend this is a videocards.com article i think this was originally leaked by um igor's but igor's lab um just want to say this has been an update intel has apparently denied these reports my thoughts on them denying it is just because they don't want this to be talked about they don't want their fixes to come out early they just want this to be like their own kind of thing it's like damage control but looking at it now, we can look at this. So apparently ETVB was a issue and this is what kind of fixed it. So microcode. So a microcode error was really the answer, which is really not what I expected, but it's kind of like interesting that that's the fix. So basically what I'd recommend right now is just disable TVB. So there should be a microcode update by the end of July. So you have about a month. Just wait in that next month, see if you got a BIOS update with a new microcode. My BIOS allows me to switch microcodes between an auto version and then 0x, I think it's 11f or 111, and then 123. So 125 will be newer, but this is why I really do think this is actually the answer. So if I go 14900KS, or just even a 14900K on Intel Arc, if you see this thermal velocity boost frequency here, so this one says 6.2. The 1400K is 5.8. The 13, I don't remember the 1300K and the 1300K SR, but if then we go something to like the 14700K and you look at, so Intel Arc is always just going to be what has all your answers. This doesn't have any thermal velocity boost talked about at all. This is why I really do think this is the issue. And it would make sense because there has never been any instability issues on the i7s. But on the i9s, this is where all the issues were. Because I remember seeing Twitter posts back in the day. It's like, there have been zero instability issues on the 13700K. Zero stability issues on the 14700K. It's like, maybe this makes sense now. So, let's just go into the BIOS. Let's fix it for you guys. Here I am in my motherboard's BIOS. This is on the Z790i Lightning. So, I'm just going to go and do a couple of things. First of all, go into your advanced mode. For me, it's F6. Sometimes it's F7. Sometimes it's F2. You'll see it on your motherboard. But we're just gonna go straight to, go to like where your fan speed control is. You should have an AIO if you have a 14900K or any i9. So if you don't, then there's some issues, but I would just highly recommend figuring out where your pump is, set it to that full speed. So your pump isn't gonna make a lot of noise. For example, on the Frozen Knot 360, which is the AIO I recommend, it's $60, 5,000 RPM pump. It will allow you to just plug it in a SATA. It'll always run max performance. Would definitely recommend doing that. I was going to recommend turn off auto driver install because it's terrible. But go into your CPU configuration on your advanced tab or somewhere where all this CPU stuff is. So if you ever get a microcode update, you'll see this. So yep, 0x11f and 123. 123 will be the newest one and then 11f should be older. I just leave it on auto. I don't know which one it runs on actually. But I'm going to run over a couple things I recommended in my last video as well. So just Intel hyper threading technology, disable that. 
if you need hyper threading if you're using a lot of high core count cpus don't turn it off but like if you're gaming turn it off it's going to perform better there's a cut like you can turn off c stage you can enable them if you want your low idle keep them all enabled but i mean uh virtualization if you don't use vms or anything turn that off it should help performance just a little bit thermal throttling i always leave it enabled there's no reason not to all of these other things should be fine now going into the oc tweaker cpu configuration i said this before all core set it to whatever your all core ratio is on my ks 5.9 look up your cpu i'll drop them right now on what they should be um you don't have to do anything for your e cores don't have to do anything for your cash ratio i'd recommend overclocking it but like yeah um undervolt protection just disable that there is some like weird vulnerabilities and stuff with undervolting. That's why they have to enable the protection, but we don't really care. So looking at all this TVV stuff, here's all you gotta do. Just disable enhanced TVB. But if I was you, since we did tune everything else, I'm just gonna disable all this. Yeah, just disable all of it. I was looking, sorry if like, something like intel apo which is kind of like a dead software would matter but no and the only reason this isn't going to matter also is because you are setting that all core so you're fine now going into voltage i'd recommend setting something like an offset or a fixed so like for me i can do like 1.35 pretty easily with this i can lower the llc if i wanted to this is going to drop your power draw so much and because a lot of these cpus can actually like handle a lot lower voltage than they say but i'm not going to recommend but like i'm not going to do that offset mode's a little messed up on this board but like 1.4 you gotta mess around see what voltage your cpu runs stock on a stress test of your choice maybe y cruncher that's what i'd use y cruncher vt3 and then um just see what voltage it runs during hardware info and then we'll lower it let's actually try it like, look We'll try it. So let's just go and we'll show a little undervolting. Here we are on my desktop. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up hardware info and then open up Y cruncher as well. So I'm going to make sure you guys can see this. Yep. There we go. So as you can see now, the CPU, the temperatures are just a little weird. This board kind of undervolts, overvolts a little bit. So anyways, V core is at 1.48. 1.44 this board kind of jumps now 1.54 the board jumps these voltages really high this is why i always recommend under volting but 1 a 18 all right now let's see what v core i'm getting i also have an unlimited like i don't have a power limit set and it's instantly hitting 100 c because it's doing 500 watts on the cpu at 1.5 volts yeah no that's not safe so now we're gonna do a little restart like okay maybe it won't run that hot in a game or like that crazy voltage but like still i don't feel comfortable doing that so set offset or fixed fixed i find works a little better on this board do 1.4 you can set your llc to whatever let's just try level three and a half three just do level three that's what i'd recommend now we're gonna go into windows i don't even know if this is going to be stable because i know level one will work but let's see if level three will this is part of the thing so Certain motherboards have like different LLC things as well. The lower your LLC is on most boards besides. Yeah, yeah. So like the bigger the number is, the more it will droop. It's some boards it's a little different. You just kind of have to mess around and research it yourself. But let's open up. Oh, wait, this is not where hardware info is. Let's look how fast that boots. AMD can never. All right, so let's just open this and then one, eight, 18 and then let's see okay e core is at one point hold up i can't even see let's full screen this for me 1.28 like look how much lower this is and now it's only pulling 365 ish watts so yeah and obviously now it's coolable so there's that i mean this is why you need to undervolt these cpus it's just so important if you enjoy content like this and you like me kind of going into some of the bio settings and stuff definitely check out the discord i will be very soon working on an overclocking guide for you guys so that you can learn how to overclock your pcs in video format not just in good old text format so i'll be doing very long videos for you guys so that you guys can subscribe and learn how to overclock your pcs yourself
it'll be a monthly subscription just join the discord too and you guys can support me in there follow me on twitter and yeah see you guys later hit the like button down below and subscribe also